Hello and welcome to From No Crypto to No Crypto. This is Blockchain Wayne bringing you another cryptocurrency podcast. Today's episode brought to us by Coincierge Club, mobile private key wallet and point of sale solution. Coincierge Club makes purchasing easy, safe, and overall process more efficient while costing less, helping to make cryptocurrency mainstream. All right, we'll t- take a quick look at the market today. Uh, looks like total cryptocurrency market cap is sitting at $213 billion. Uh, you know, not much movement from the last time we talked, but, uh, you know, a little, we saw a little bit of movement up, a little bit of consolidation back down. Uh, many people are still calling for a bullish reversal. Uh, many signs are pointing to bullish, although we hadn't seen the price action reflect that just quite yet. Uh, Bitcoin dominance sitting around 52%. I think the biggest thing affecting Bitcoin dominance going from 54 to 52 is the fact that Bitcoin cash is up 33% in the last week because of the upcoming fork on November 15th. All right, so uh, I'm gonna skip crypto news today. I've got some stuff posted on the Facebook page from No Crypto to No Crypto. So if you wanna keep up with some of the news, why don't you check that out? But today I really want to talk about the history of money, right? What what is money and what is currency? And what is, you know, why is Bitcoin a big deal? Bigger than just saying, oh, it's a better, it's a better option than, than the U.S. dollar. It's a better option than whatever country you're listening from's government currency. And that's not the case. What you want to understand is the history of money. And I've done a deep dive into this this past week. I mean, I've spent literally hours uh, researching and looking and watching some different documentaries about the history of money. And really, everything you look at just gives you the reason why cryptocurrency is going to be, be adopted more and more as we start to see these issues, I mean, you've seen it, right? So Venezuela, right? Venezuela and Zimbabwe are two areas where Bitcoin purchases are heavy. And and Venezuela, Dash is also a big thing, which Dash is another cryptocurrency. Um, Because they're already experiencing hyperinflation, their dollar or their currency, should I say fiat currency, is failing. And what you want to understand is every fiat currency in the history of the world you can go back as far as you can imagine. Any time that a fiat currency has been created, paper or whatever kind, whatever, in some cases it was started out with a gold coin that was backed by the gold value that was built into the coin and was eventually diminished and became gold plated or silver became silver plated. And that's another example of just inflation. So let's take a look at what typically causes, you know, what, What's the current system? What, what is fiat currency? And what, what happened, let's say, in the United States? And maybe we can compare that to, say, what's happened in Rome. And we, we, you know, we hope that history won't repeat itself, but you know Rome eventually collapsed because uh, of currency and just government spending. And that is exactly what we're looking at right now. So what happens is the government creates a currency um, and, through, and in deficit, through deficit spending. So by issuing a bond. So... You have one entity that issues a bond, and then the Federal Reserve issues a issues a um, a paper note to buy that bond. Now, bond is basically just debt. You're you're selling debt, right? Uh, and what it is is the Fed buys bonds with a, a check when they have no money to cover it, right? They create the money, and they continue to swap bonds and cash between banks and the Fed. And what does this actually do? This is basically borrowing from the prosperity of future generations. Right. So they're, they're, they're basically using debt to to secure this currency and saying that we're going to pay it back with the prosperity of the future generation. So, in other words, we're paying for um, past generations right now in money that was borrowed in that debt. And our kids are going to face even more, which is why you notice that the, the deficit never goes down. The deficit is continually increasing because when you understand how the system works, the deficit has to outpace the cash uh, amount. So now when you earn cash, you deposit it into a bank. This is where fractional reserve banking comes in and further dilutes our dollar, right? So you deposit, uh, and for easy numbers, I know it's more, let's say you deposit $100 into the bank. The bank is only required to hold 10% of that fractional reserve lending, uh, fractional reserve banking. So the other 90%, the other $90 is lended out, right? It's lended out. And if someone, someone else or another business has that money that's lended out and it's deposited into another bank. And then that, that $90, 
you know, 90% of that is lended out. And you see this happen over and over again. So every hundred dollars is deposited into a bank creates a thousand dollars in circulation, just out of nowhere, just digits, numbers in a computer. It's, it's not real. And that's inflation at its finest. And then when you think about, you know, going back to what we talked about with the federal reserve, the federal reserve, many people think is a government entity. It's not, it is a private corporation with stockholders. Now, we don't know who owns those stocks. In the beginning, it was all the big banks. But with all the mergers and everything that's happened, there's no way to tell who actually holds stock in the Federal Reserve. Um, and, and this cycle just continues. Um, but with the Federal Reserve, a couple of things you need to understand. Prior to the Federal Reserve being created, there was no income tax, right? The, you know, the same year that the Federal Reserve was created back in 1913, the Constitution was amended to create income tax. So... Um, the system only works as long as debt outpaces, right? You, you just keep printing money. You can't ever, you, you will never have enough to cover that debt. So you continue to print more and the deficit continues. You hear about us sending aid to different countries. Do you think we're sending a bunch of used bills? No, we're sending freshly printed, freshly pressed bills to these other countries. And, and that's where the, this, this, the money scam has been able to last for so long is because Many of the world, much of the world has adopted the U.S. dollar as as a quote unquote stable currency for them and accept it as, as forms of payment and transfer. And that's why uh, this is going on for so long, because we just continue to print and, and other governments are using it. But you see governments or other countries are slowly moving away from utilizing the uh, the U.S. dollar. So just just to kind of give you a breakdown, I know it's kind of hard to see on a see on a listen to a podcast, but I'm going to refer you to a couple of videos that I watched. And I watched the whole series of videos just to get a lot of the information from this. But, uh, you know, so step one, the government creates uh, glorified IOUs called bonds, right? What is bonds? I mean, bond is tep- typically short for bondage. So um, they're creating debt, which, 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 you know, um, bonds increase the national debt. And then, Bonds are swapped for currency, IOUs in paper form, creating more cash. So all our currency is is a paper IOU uh, creating more cash. And step three, the government spends money on government programs and uh, financial aid and many different things and infuse that money into the economy. That income is then deposited by employees or, or recipients into the bank. And the banks create more currency by fractional reserve lending, exponentially increasing the amount of currency that is out there. We pay taxes and taxes are used to cover the interest on those bonds because uh, they know, you know, that's got to be something to try to cover this so it doesn't just go bust right away. Uh, and then step six, the ever increasing debt ceiling continues to rise, requires ever increasing amounts of debt to outpace the money supply. And then the Federal Reserve, step seven, the Federal Reserve makes their profits and the system is fundamentally evil. Um, the Federal Reserve is basically printing their own money, creating the debt and then getting paid back. Uh, making profits as income taxes are collected. Um, so, uh, you know, money has been a downfall of civil- civilization as long as we have records. So when you, when a set amount of gold or metal were used, stable governments flourished. But as power stepped in to each, money was diluted ev- until eventually worthless. And you can look at this with Rome and many other countries where it happened time and time again, where, uh, you know, first they started with the barter system, which the barter system is not very, uh, useful because you can't, if someone wants to trade a cow for a chicken, you can't divide that cow up to get equal value. So that's when currency was created. Gold and silver, stable stuff, stable value. Gold and silver have, have had value for, for hundreds and thousands of years, right? So, uh, but eventually they move to either a paper system or they, like I mentioned before, they start minting coins with less gold in them or they start, you know, making them gold plated. And eventually, as power stepped in, money diluted till it's eventually worthless. Then crash, crash causes financial depression. So that's what's happening with the U.S. dollar and other government issued fiat currencies. However, the issue is more serious than we realize because the U.S. dollar, like I mentioned before, is is used among most countries. So everyone, you know, uh, cryptocurrency solves that problem as it's a defl- deflationary item, deflationary currency. It can counteract defl- inflation, which is why many of the banks. Uh, many in the government, many that are in power that understand the current monetary system and the way things are working that, that want to continue because they have the power are the ones that are going to fight cryptocurrency. But cryptocurrency is freedom from that bondage, right? So you want to make sure, so when you understand cryptocurrency restores trust, 
So there's a finite supply of Bitcoin and most cryptocurrencies have a finite supply. And that's typically the ones that we like to highlight as well. Um, Bitcoin is unique. It's a currency, it's a network, and it's a distributed ledger to reestablish trust. So the source code is based on math and anyone can trust it. Even, you know, it doesn't matter who created it. Um, unlike a centralized organization where it matters who's at the head of that organization. Um, it just works, right? Just like, uh, you know, Euclid developed geometry back uh, thousands of years ago and nobody really knows much about him or who he is, but it doesn't matter because the math works, right? Um, so you've got that going on. Uh, Bitcoin restores the freedom taken away by big government and big banks. So less need for many of the regulatory and financial sector as cryptocurrency grows in adoption, right? There's so many different, <clears throat> excuse me, inefficiencies out there that, you know, that Bitcoin uh, solves. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in the blockchain. I mean, there's so many different things. Uh, you know, why are, you know, why are banks making this big money when if, if we all went to the bank today and demanded our money, they wouldn't have the cash to cover it because they don't, you know, they don't keep it. They, they lend it out and inflate the currency even more. So that's another reason, you know, it's more than just, Hey, this is an investment vehicle. I'm going to buy some Bitcoin and some other cryptocurrency because I think it's going to go up in value and I can make some money. Now you want to understand how the current financial system works, uh, what's happening um, and just be prepared and you want to hedge your bets. So the same reason why people buy gold and silver is an alternative to the currency being printed and inflated daily. So that is what you're doing. You know, many people that I talk to that invested large sums in the cryptocurrency, it wasn't just so, hey, I can make a huge return on my money. It's the hedge against the dollar. Because think about your dollar. Every year, the buying power of your dollar is getting less and less. Why is that? It's diminishing because of inflation, because they're printing more. Inflation doesn't mean the cost of goods is going up. It means the value. The value of things are going down. And, you know, many people peg inflation at around 3% a year. But when you think about it, it's much more than that. And how many people have noticed recently, yeah, the price on the items may not have gone up much recently but what you get in the package container or whatever you're buying the quantity has diminished right all you need to do is buy a bag of latest potato chips to see that right that that bag is not full i mean you're buying mostly air with a handful of chips in there so uh, that is typically what happens you know the the unit size gets smaller but they sell them for around the same price for a period of time when really that's where the inflation has taken taken effect so um and you really want to understand that and then understand how cryptocurrency can solve that issue uh, because you can't just, you can't print more Bitcoin. There's a limited supply. Uh, and when there's supply uh, and there's, there's a demand and you know, there's scarcity, then you typically, that's where you get value. And that's where people see the value of Bitcoin is going to continue to go up. You know, we're looking at a short term downtrend right now that may or may not be over. Um, Many people are saying it's over and we're already moving up, but either way, the long-term play, this is going to hedge against the dollar, which is why Venezuela, like I said, the month of October, Venezuelans saw record trading volume in Bitcoin. Why is that? Because they don't have any trust in their government currency. So um, that's really it. Hope you learned something today. This is it's a little uh, twist from what I normally do where I talk about market news and to go over a little bit of crypto education, but really wanted to talk about this and give you something to think about. Now, um, if, you, if you're wondering where most of my research came from, it was, so there's a YouTube series called the hidden secrets of money. Uh, now there's 10 episodes. Uh, the biggest ones I recommend you watch are episode one and episode four. Um, just, you, you want to check those out. Uh, but all of them are very good because they really just walk you through, the, the history of money, the history of currency. And also, you know, there's a difference to, between money and currency. You know, anything that, that maintains a solid value is money. Anything that can be inflated is currency that has nothing backing it. Uh, and that's really what we're spending. We're not spending technically money when you understand the true term of money. So uh, like I said, Hidden Secrets of Money, it's on YouTube. Make sure you check it out. Uh, if you get some time, it's a really, really good series. Uh, we'll teach you a lot. And, you know, it's, it's all backed up by facts. You know, there's nothing on there that I, I wasn't able to go to research and, and check history and see, yeah, this is exactly what they're saying. This is exactly what happened. All right. So that's it, everyone. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you on the next episode.